hello welcome back to my channel um i hope the past week has treated you well and um until weekend now so i thought i would do something a little bit different i'm sorry if i clear my throat a bit too much um this week i am having a little bit of flu so yep anyway um for this video i thought i would do an update of my um in general which i kind of sneaked a bit uh, i mean i did show a little bit of what i plan to do with it but it has since been you know decorated and all that so i have a few pens here that i want to refill these are my fountain pens and if you want to know how fountain pens work um there's a whole other video in and of itself i will link some that i find instructive um up above here i think like later in post so you can check those out but um this video i'm not going to talk too much about um different types of fountain pens i'm just going to be re-inking and showing you how i um organize my new journal so without much further ado let's get started so first up this is a hobonichi um spring edition for the yeah, in the a6 so this hobonichi that ah, this is oh my goodness this is a hobonichi taco 2023 which is this year's but it's a spring edition so um it uh, it starts with people. So I got this because this is the last year they're doing it in the original Tomoe River paper and uh, I wanted to see all the swatches on the original Tomoe River paper because it shows she much better than um, the new one I feel. So what I did, um, this is inspired by another um, journaling person, is that I have all my colours organised by um, color families and I swatch them here so these are the reds and the uh, reds and pinks and burgundies I think so I have them here and I kind of write the names here they're not exactly um, the names in full but when I look at it I know what it is so that's good enough for me and then I have the reds I set aside like two months per color family so the reds are uh, still in here and the thing about Tomoe River paper is that it does have quite a fair bit of ghosting so I'm not sure how this will work over time but uh, we'll see, we'll cross the bridge when we get to it hopefully you know, it holds up for these people okay um, the next section I have is the browns and the orange so browns, orange, maybe a bit of yellow right? because they all kind of overlap with each other here this is actually one of my favourites and then um, we have the greens so you will see here some of it looks a bit browny because um, these and this looks a bit blue purple because these are the more color shifty ones um, hopefully the camera can pick this up this is one of my favorite blue things this is Sabi Midori and you can see the sheen is really really lovely and then well we come into the blues and I have a lot of blues so just because they're on here doesn't mean that I actually have a full bottle of them some of them are just samples uh, I do have sample bottles that, sample vows basically that were gifted or exchanged from people and sometimes I purchase samples as well and then there are the purples which kind of veer into grey territory as well so it gets a bit iffy sometimes with these and this one is a really nice uh, one that I got as a gift that I don't use enough this is um, Daimine um, Winter Miracle it has, it's purple with a gold sheen and a little like periwinkle kind of um, glitter in it so it's really pretty but washing out with it's pain but so I haven't really gotten a chance to or rather I haven't gotten around to using it yet and the last category I have are like my grey, black and I guess white there are some colours that I haven't swatched yet but I'll probably get around to it eventually so that is um, the monthly section and these are basically just basic swatches um, how this works for me is that this is this basically serves as an index so for example if I were to look for a swatch for, let's say, or I haven't filled this out yet because um, this is a work in progress, but uh, I know I have definitely used, for example, um, I think it's this coral pink, right? So coral pink is on the 9th of April, so I'll go to pink tab, which is April, and then we go to the 9th. And then there will be a writing sample here. And the first pen, uh, basically, I am gonna set. I'm gonna try and set up enough space so that I can have five writing samples. And I'll write down the pen here. So this was um, Tasha uh, Coral Pink, which is one of my favorite uh, favorite inks, written with uh, Kawako Purple in uh, Edmund. So 
when I fill it again in a different pan I'll write like another sample below so basically my writing samples are just random excerpts of books that I'm reading or I have read I think I usually just pick and choose and it's usually a random paragraph here and there so yeah so this is basically it it's very basic but I like how I get a chance to see each ink in um, different pens in one shot so I can I mean if I were to I mean the idea is such that if let's say I have an ink that only works in broader niche for example I can't be expected to remember that but if I were to open up to the page I will be able to see that oh this ink didn't really work out in which pen and then I'll know which one not to fill in, into in the future and so on and so forth so without much further ado oh no wait before I get to that um, just a little bit on what is decorating this thing so this is a TCMC vinyl that I got off Carousel that is covering up the Hoboichi deco tags and then because this is spring uh, spring little circle I essentially what I did was I put uh, the hollow that you see here is a holographic um, sticker from Sautelier and uh, over that I put the um, what do you call this this is like the weather emoji from TCMC as well the cover is a A6 plastic cover from I think it was from Taobao. I basically just searched like these things, um, plastic, like, you know, book cover kind of thing, and uh, it fits perfectly, so it's great. And the tabs are also TCMC. I bought the mini blank, uh, mini blank tabs in minimal white, and then I just basically used uh, clean color dot markers. So, which are my favorite? Give me a moment. Uh, so, these, these little boogers that I use way too much. So I use these to like uh, mark the colors on the side. So I'm actually thinking of doing a second set of these um, in front for this section here. So that, you know, I have two sets of tabs and you know, so one, one for the index and one for the actual record. Right, so let's get to updating this. So I have five pens I want to um, ink or re ink in, uh, in certain cases today. So I'm going to start first with the easy one, which is a re ink. So this is my uh, Twisty, um, what's this? This is a Twisty 5AT uh, rose gold, right? It's not actually gold, it's just plated. So it's not that expensive, honestly. You're just playing for the aesthetic. <laughs> You could just get the regular one where it's not rose gold and it will probably cost you a lot less but I couldn't resist this. This is the rose gold smoke. Um, I think it's the second version. I really like how you can kind of see the nib but you can't like through this translucent uh, thing. I'm not sure if it picks up very well actually but you can kind of see a tinge of the nib inside which I quite like. Right. So I usually keep this filled with this ink. Um, this is by Hana Ink. It is so this is kanji but in Chinese we read it as hong cha which is like red tea but basically the it's basically tea right so um, the fun part about this ink is that besides the fact that it's a very really nice um, dark burnt orangey kind of brown is that it's scented so it smells actually quite like um what do you call it it smells like Earl Grey tea and well while I haven't really enjoyed drinking Earl Grey in a while I do like the smell of it still like I find the taste a bit too strong of the steeps for too long but I do still really enjoy the scent of it so having a, a scented thing is really kind of fun they do have um, other inks that are scented that I am extremely tempted by as well but suffice to say that these inks do not come cheap I think this bottle was um, I think it was $55 in, uh, in Singapore dollars anyway uh, without a sale I got it when it was a 20 I think when I got this from a tink shop in Singapore and they are basically a Japanese specialty um, stationery store and um, they had 20% off at a point in time so I got it at I think 40 plus so that wasn't too bad but yeah uh, it was $44 because if you divide 25 by 5 times 4, yeah, $44 so it wasn't that bad in comparison to full price but it was still quite painful to think about that so this is one of my favourite things I usually just keep it in 
this pen and I will write a bit later just to let you have a look at what it looks like. So I tend to keep most of my ink bottles in their original packaging, mostly because I find it easier to um, stack them and keep them when they're already like flat like this and it's easier to um, basically play Tetris and fit them all in the box. Right, so this is um, Hana Black Tea. Um, I think I have actually swatched it in here before. Yes, I did. So this is how it looks like. It doesn't have much sheening, but it does smell really great and there's a bit of sheening. So this is a broad bit. Right? So this this one, I haven't really changed the ink colour in this. I usually keep a brown or a, or a orange brown, I guess, in this because I think it looks very nice. And that's about it for this pen. Right, so the remaining three, uh, four pens are, well, they used to have other colours in them and I have already washed them out prior to this video because I didn't want to spend an entire like 20 minutes to half an hour just cursing at the thing that refuses to come clean if you have found the pen user, you know exactly what I mean because sometimes things just take really long to get clean enough so I'm not super fussy about getting my pens 110% clean because at the end of the day, eh, I'm fine if it's like slightly cross-contaminated or it's just the slightest bit um, tinged with something else. It's not the end of the world for me. I am. I, I mean, I'm not gonna cry about it. Like this got really stained at one point by. Uh, uh, I can't remember. I think it was like Tsuji by. Um, what's that called? By Pilot Yoshizuku, and I've kind of just like resigned myself to it. It is what it is. This also got stained by that same thing, so sometimes it happens and it's fine. Like, I'm fine with that. Right, so the first pen I'm going to fill up now is this pen. So I realized I dismantled the whole thing and now you have, now you have no idea what kind of this is. So this is a Pilot Kakuno. The Kakuno is really cute because it has like this smiley face thing on the nib. So this is a fine nib. I very rarely use fine nibs, but I'm going to try and do a coloured ink spread next week on in my whole three weeks. So I want to have a finer nib to use. So this is my choice. Um, so the only downside to pilots I feel is that their nibs are just, or rather their converters are just really, really pathetically small. Like the converter just doesn't hold much ink compared to the others. Like my two speed can take so much ink and it doesn't dry up. Whereas like the Kakuno on the other hand, because it's a child friendly pen, the downside is that um, it has, I guess, blow holes in the event of um, children choking and whatnot, which is great. But um, what then happens is that you see there are little holes here, so that in case the kid chokes on it, you know, it's less of, I guess it's less of a hazard. Um, there are also holes on the top, so it's great in that sense, but it's not great because it means that evaporation will happen. So I bought this particular model, this clear transparent uh, demonstrator version in Kobe back in 2019 on my honeymoon. And it has like the Kobe skyline along it, so it's really cute. I'm never getting rid of this, even though I hardly use Kakunos like these days. Right, so there's one more pen down. Oh, um, this ink is the um, Sailor Ink Studio 162, so even though it looks green here, it generally looks more blue to me somehow, but yeah, let's just, let's just write it on this thing. I will definitely do a writing sample later, so you can take a better look at it. Alright, next pen. Um, hmm, I'm a bit stunned now, I can't remember what I wanted to put into what. Um, Alright, another um, Ink Studio ink is the Sailor 123. So ironically, I'm using um, all my original purchases of the Sailor Studio. These are, I think these were the ones that um, first drove the whole uh, color changing ink craze. So this one, this one, I think there are a few others, but these are one of the original few. Uh, so the 123 is actually really close to um, Vinta Ink's uh, Armada or Agin, Agin, I think. So, um, if you have one to choose between the two, I would say just pick one, you don't need both. I do have both, but um, a comparison can be done another time. So for this one, I'm going to be putting it into my, well, this is basically my most expensive pen. So this is my um, 
this is my sailor. So I'm putting a sailor in and a sailor family. This is my only sailor pen actually if I'm not wrong. So this is a this is a Sailor Pro Blade. This is a Sailor Pro Blade Gear Slim. So this was purchased last year as a birthday present from my husband. Um, it's the I think it was like Winter Sky. It's like a limited-ish edition color. So this is the idea is that it's the color of a Winter Sky, I suppose. And having never seen a Winter Sky, I'm gonna have to take their word for it. So it's really cool in that um, this is my only gold nib pen. So it's gold. Uh, the nib is gold and it's been plated with I think rhodium or something, so it looks silver. Um, it's really cool because it's this is one shade of lilac and the cap is like a subtly slightly different shade. And this is a music nib. So I'll show you what I mean by that later. So this is one, two, three, and my sealer. So two more pens to go now. Um, the next thing that I'm going to be inking up is um, Lucia from uh, Vinta Ink. So Vinta, if I'm not wrong, is a Filipino brand. Um, locally, I get it from City Lux. I'm not sure where you can get it in other parts of the world, but I'm pretty sure City Lux will be willing to ship internationally. So because I saw my bottles um, standing up in the box, so I have like little labels this way so that I can see what colour is without having to take the entire box out. But the label here is pretty cute as well. Yep. So Lucia is also known as Deep Water Blue and as you can see it's um, 18 sing dollars for a bottle here. I may have split this with a friend because there is suspiciously no way I didn't. I'm about one third done with this bottle so I may have given away samples then because I haven't used it that much. So I'm putting this in a Kaweco. So this is a Kaweco collection from last year. So Kaweco is yet another one of um, the Kaweco spot anyway. Is yet another one of those um, converters that are stupidly small. But in this case, it's because the pen itself is stupidly small. So let me just show you, right? So this is how much ink it can take. It's really not a lot because it's a little piston over here. And the reason why it's so small is because the pen itself is tiny. So it really fits just nice like this. So this is all it can take because this is all it can take. And the pen when it's capped looks something like this. And that's it. So this is the this is like one of the limited edition colors from last year. They call it iridescent and it does look really iridescent. And I have this in the dump rock size. Again, like if you're not familiar with nib sizes and whatnot, I will be doing writing samples later so you can get an idea of like what the new nib sizes look like. <clears throat> Alright, last and finally not but finally not least, this is uh, my Kawaiko Proko. So to be honest, I didn't buy this pen because I wanted it. I bought this pen because I did a dump. I bought the normal size Kawaiko converter for my um, first Kawaiko Sport, which was this fella. And it's basically the same model as just now. And as you can see, because it is so bleeding tiny, if I were to put a regular size converter in here, right? Firstly, it's not gonna fit because the head is... No, wait, it, it can? No, no. So firstly, it doesn't fit very well. Secondly, even if it fit, I can't close the darn thing. Right, this needs to come all the way up here. It's way too long. So it wasn't gonna work out and it didn't work out so um yeah I kind of, but the things that i had already um filled it with ink so i couldn't there was no take back see so to speak so i just had to go find like a pen that you know to stick it in and so i just bought like another color code i mean i don't regret this purchase but this is definitely not my usual color scheme for a pen i prefer something like 
kind of less dusty. I, I don't know, I'm just not really digging the color palette, but it was the best of the choices that I had. Anyway, so for this one, I am going to be filling it up with um, J Herbin's uh, Rose, how do I pronounce this? Tendress? I don't know, because this is French and I cannot speak French. Anyhow, so I'm going to fill this up real quick. So uh, J Herbin does do these like tiny bottles that are pretty useful for trying different colors. Uh, this particular ink was actually gifted to me by a friend, so I have no idea how much it costs. But um, I do feel that like I ought to get some use out of it instead of letting it sit to collect dust. So I'm gonna just fill this up. I will say that the color reminds me a lot of um, pink dragon fruit, which I guess, given that August is kind of tropicalish, it does fit, I guess. <laughs> Right, so that is it for filling all my eggs. So it's a pretty, I feel like filling ink is generally quite fast free. Like the hated part generally is um, when it comes to actually cleaning out your pants. So when you want to change ink color or if it runs out and dries out, then you want to change it out. That, that is the troublesome part. Right, so I'm not going to do a right example of this because I've already shown you that one and it's literally the same pen so I can't really continue. There's kind of no point in me continuing writing that, so I'm going to skip that and put this in with my other pens. So I do have other pens in here that are um, over here that are basically filled already. And these are, you know, I'm so happy that I'm not going to change them out just yet. I also have another drawer of pens that are basically clean and unfilled and going to stay that way for now. So yeah, let's get down to business to um, defeat the hands. Alright, so... Rose Tendris first, since it's a pink, it's on the 7th of April. 7th of April over here. So what I'm going to do firstly is I'm going to put down um, the pen. Uh, this angle is really bad for my handwriting. Right. So this is more of a pink purple, I feel. And now I'm going to find something to copy for this section. Ah, uh, no, no. No. Alright, so this has been on my table um, recently as a read, so I'm going to find something from in here to just um, do an X of kind of situation. So this is just a quick sample of what an M-nib on a Kaweco looks like. So this is going to get a while dry, but you can kind of see that it's really similar to this. The change in ink doesn't really change the nib size in this particular case. There are other cases where the ink is particularly dry and therefore like um, just when you change the ink, your nib sizes look almost identical. So for example, just for example, um, where is that sample? So this is a Kaweco name as well. This is in bold, the B, which is the size up. But as you can see here, the difference between a bold and a medium isn't very much. That's, I think, in part because this um, Kionowoto ink is pretty dry, so it's not so flowy, and I guess the, the width isn't as wide. Yep, so that is one interesting thing about pens, I guess. It's not just the nib itself that affects the um, line width, it's also um, the ink that you choose. So this is one page. Oh, 
Okay, so next pen would be um, let's do let's do this systematically. So there are no more yellows, right? And so we move on to the greens. So that is uh. 126 uh, 162. So as you can see, 162 looks almost purple. You can kind of see a bit of green, a bit of blue, but it looks almost purple when you swatch it. So that's what's pretty excuse me, that's what pretty that's what's pretty cool about this particular thing if you ask me. So this is August 11th. Like no you have nothing here at all. So August 11th. So this is a Kaweco. No, that's not a What am I saying? Oh my goodness. This is a Kakuno. And a fine. So as you can see, it's a lot. It's a far, far finer line. And if you look at it, you can hardly see any purple or any green at all. It kind of looks like a dark blue green kind of situation. Which is, I have to say, pretty darn cool. So I'm going to just find something to hold. So this particular book is filled with um, quotes and stuff that are just really nice, I guess. <laughs> so I'm just pulling quotes that kind of um, don't make me think too much while I'm filming, but that I would still like to look back on. I usually um, try and pick out like paragraphs and stretch them out across pages, but um, in today's case, because I'm filming as I'm doing this, I kind of want to be able to um, stop quickly and not write on, on and on and like, you know, try and keep track of too many things at once. So I'm just picking um, shorter quotations instead. is going into my pencil case because I'm going to be using this for the upcoming week. You'll see it in um, next week's video when I have my spread done basically. I will do a plan with me kind of thing with colour next week. So this is how it looks like. It is very, um, honestly to me it looks blue-grey. It doesn't look the slightest bit green or purple. I mean maybe a hint of purple if you look at like the pooling here. But um, yeah, generally I don't see the green, which is odd because it's supposed to be green. But I don't know, maybe I got a strange bottle. Maybe my eyes are strange. Who knows? Right, so this says dry relatively quickly. So I'm going to move on quickly to um, Sailor 1 to 3 now instead of. And then I'll do Lucia last because I have used Lucia before and now we can do a 1 to 1 comparison on the same page. So, um, one, two, three is on the 10th of February. I'm pretty sure we have money there. Yep, we have money there. So, this is my favorite pen, even though I don't use it often because it's a bit precious. Um, it has two different shades of purple. Um, though some people would say that it's the same shade, but no, they are two different shades. Uh, this is a grey bubble, this is a slightly richer bubble. Um, it's a gold nib, which means that the nib is actually made out of, um, I'm not sure if it's 14k or 18k gold, and then it's plated over uh, that, so it's, the nib is generally softer. And this is a music nib, so, is it music? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's an MS nib. So this is a... Uh, So you can see that it's not exactly a rounded um, nib, it's actually kind of at an angle. It's not, how do I put it, it's, the head is kind of like bulbous I guess a little bit. And it's kind of like a chisel but it's a bit round, so like a flat typical nib. So there are different types of fountain pen nibs, and I know I said this wasn't going to be a fountain pen tutorial but so this is your typical um, nib, right, where it's just round and for typical writing. 
and then uh, so you that's your extra fine your fine your medium and so on and then you also have the stub lips which are essentially flat so the the top of it is flat so that when it comes out it's like an italic lip basically so this is similar to your pilot parallel pens that people use for um what do you call it for um black leather uh, calligraphy and so on and so forth in fact you could use this for black leather but it would just be extremely tiny and that's that's not un impossible but it takes a certain level of skill i'm still using like 4.5 mm and like 3 mm lip sizes so I'm not at a level where I can confidently use a 1.5 yet and then this is um, this is a music lip so it isn't as you can see it's not as sharp around the edges and but it's still um, it's still angled so it's pretty interesting uh, there's also another type of lip called like a zoom lip but I'm not really sure what exactly is the difference. There is a difference, but I can't remember what exactly is the difference. So I will refrain from going too much into that here. So I'm not going to write too long because uh, the thing about stub nips or music nips or nips like this is that um, they generally um, are quite fat. So you can't, it, the words tend to take up more space basically. So the book that I'm copying from is um, The Crossroads uh, of Shirt and Mus. It's by Elena and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And uh, basically it's one of my favourite books in the world basically. Um, I put it down and I come back to it again and so on and so forth. I'm still in the process of like, you know, circling around it. So as you can see, um, the strokes here are thicker, um, the words take up more space, just like Two sentences has taken up so many lines in comparison to before. I mean, of course, this is a different. Uh, this is a Japanese lip compared to like the Korean one, and uh, not the Korean, the Taiwanese and the um, Twin Peaks Taiwanese and the uh, Kaweco, which is German. So that's I mean, different manufacturers also have different influences like lip sizes. So that is another point of consideration. There are a lot of points of consideration here. So um, say no one to three. The uh, amazing part about this is that. I hope the camera can pick this up is that um, from some parts it's blue, some parts it's purple some parts it's even a little bit greenish like around the edges so it's really a very nice um, I guess you can call it colour changing thing because it does depend on the kind of paper that you write on it also has a pretty cool shading going on here so yeah I really like this thing this is one of my favourites it's if you are, if you have difficulty getting um, Sailor, you can try to get Vinta. I'm not sure which one is easier for you to get, but Sailor One Two Three and Vinta Armada slash um, Argen is about the same color. They are very very close, so one is as good as the other. Actually, very very subtle differences, but um, not that much that you would need to. I'm just going to show you the swatches really quick. So this is 123 and this is Amada. So um, 123 has a stronger shift purple base kind of thing. But honestly, if you're just writing it, like when you swap like that, it's obviously different. But when you're writing with it, the two of them are largely very similar. Alright, so um, last one here for today would be Lucia. And Lucia I have already inked up previously, so it's going to be slightly different. Um, so Lucia is here. So previously I had it inked up in my uh, Pilot Pereira in the, they call it the calligraphy medium nib. So this is kind of like a stub nib as well. You can see that there's a little bit of angles going on here. Um, today I have it in my Kawaiko, um, this is my Kawaiko sport in the double broad. So straight away you can see that the ink looks very different. It's from the same bottle, the exact same bottle, but it already looks extremely different. So, I mean, of course, this is when it's wet, so it will impact the way it looks, but well, <clears throat> that's okay. I'm gonna pick another quote from um, 
passes so should be nice and we'll go from there So you can see as it dries off here, um, it's the same color really, it's just that um, you get to see the subtleties and the color better when it's in a broader net because you get to see the slight purple tinge to it and there's better shading when um, it's in a broader net. Whereas in the skinnier net, you know, it's, I guess it's clear but I mean you still can read it so you still can use it in thin net but you don't get to see shading and all that much. Now this is not how I would the size I'd normally write with a double broad to be honest. Like to be honest here, like double broad at this size is a bit squished. I would probably write bigger, but also I'm trying to kind of manage to fit, you know, like five different um, nip sizes in this eventually. So I can't let's say I take up twice the amount of size that I have here. So working within what I have, I think this is good. Um, eventually, hopefully, all these pages will be filled with like this and more and then I get to, you know, see how different inks look in different pens all in one go. So that is the hope, that is the dream. Um, obviously, it's going to take a while to get this done. I am definitely not going to rush to doing this all in one shot. I'm just going to fill it up as and when I go by. But I hope that... Um, this gave you some ideas of how you can yourself start an ink journal. Now the only thing that I don't really like about this is that it doesn't let me take down for example the price and the um, <clears throat> the price and the mills uh, of each bottle which um, my previous uh, ink journal did. So my previous ink journal I had this where like you know I could write down um, how much the ink costs uh, and then um, how many ml is there in like a bottle so that I had an idea of, of how much it costs so that is something that's bothering me I'm not sure how I will go around marrying that into this what I am considering doing is um, using the blank grid pages at the back but I'm just concerned that I may not have that many blank grid pages because honestly it's not me for that there's like one, two, three, four I mean, if I do a very basic um, list, I think I could do it. So, like, um, basically, like, ink, price, mills, you know, something like that. It will be okay, but um, I kind of want to have it, I guess, more artistic. <laughs> so, I'm still considering, like, do I want to put it in here? But, and I put it in here, how am I going to fit that information here? Or do I want to put it on an individual page? But then again, where would I fit this information? So that's definitely something for future consideration. I will update um, eventually when I do another update on this. Hopefully, I can update on that as well. So yeah, that's about it for me for this week. Um, I hope this video was informational for you, I suppose. And um, I will see you next week for another plan with me or something um, that is less... Well, I guess more plenary and less journaly. Yeah, I'll uh, catch you next week. Have a great week ahead. Bye!